Deputy Paul Kill, and the Deputy has four minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Cahirlock. Cahirlock, I spoke on this uh, on Thursday afternoon last, and I really thought that uh, Minister Harney would have seen something over the weekend and seen the light over the weekend. And to say that the opposition are playing politics with this very important motion. We are not playing politics. What we are seeing here are children of 12 years of age with the chance of living longer. What the, what the government are seeing is people, are girls of 12 years of age, dying with cervical cancer in the future. It's something that I feel extremely strong on is, and as a politician, and as politicians all around the house, we all go to funerals. And there's one type funeral that we all hate going to, that I do hate going to, and that's the cancer of a dying young lady. Just think about it. Going into the mortuary, I've seen a young lady laid out dead because of cancer. The government has something and has a chance to do something on that here tonight. But no, they won't. They stick to the party line and forget about the people outside of this house. Cancer is a slow, painful death. It's a long road that nobody wants to be on. It's actually quite a painful road that nobody wants to be on. And Minister, to say that you're saving 10 million euros on this vaccination programme and uh, 6 million on the implementation of it, I don't think that is an awful lot of money. Minister, how do you feel about this at this moment in time? This is actually on your PD website, which is defunct, gone and dead. The same will happen to a, a lot of 12-year-olds. If you do not change your mind between now and 8.30 tonight, it's easy talk and talk is very cheap. I really mean talk is very cheap. And you all, the government can go outside of this house tonight. And I hope they feel very, very proud on this vote and what they are going to do. I really do hope that you will feel proud when you go up the old steps tonight and turn left. Just think about what ye are voting for. What you are voting for. Minister, please. You are Minister, voting please, for the death please, of young please, children. Please. 12 years of please, age. Please. 12 years of age. Just think of them. When you go out on the streets tonight and when you go to your shopping centre over the weekend, just look at 12 year old girls and where they will be in the years to come. They will be dead because of this government. They will be dead because of this government. Now, that's exactly what I'm saying. And I have no apology to make. I have no apology to make. I have nieces of young, uh, in their young teens. I have friends who have family of young teens. And I think it is absolutely shameful on this government to even propose, even to come out and say they are introducing something and then two or three months later, take it away. Minister, what you said in August, that this was going to save lives. So it is okay now to come into this house, save lives in August, but no, let them die in November. That's what you were saying. And that's what every deputy on the Phoenix Fall, PD, Green and Independence are saying. It's okay, let them die. And I'm horrified, really horrified here as well. I can assure you if Mary White was on this side of the house, she would be jumping up and down. But no, not one person from the Green Party has the authority to come into this house and listen to the debate. No, I did, I've been in this house last night and tonight. I never seen one Green representative in the house here. No, because they haven't got what it takes in here. They haven't got what it takes. They're okay, they want to stay in power. And if they had, if they had what it takes to be in power, they would do the same thing tonight and do the honourable thing. And they would go up the stairs and they would turn right. What's left?
Tell your record. One minute. Is there time for okay? Yeah. Deputy, deputy. See, thanks, Deputy Minister uh, Barry Andrews, and the Minister has five minutes. Uh, thank you, Chairman. <coughs> um, we've just been subjected by uh, Deputy Co to the worst example of amateur dramatics I've seen in the House in a long time. His hysterical outburst, uh, Chairman, uh, doesn't uh, become the Fine Gael party. I'm sure of his other colleagues that had to listen and endure uh, this hysteria uh, were embarrassed by it. And he should take a leaf out of the, uh, his colleagues on those benches in providing a more balanced and illuminating debate please, about please, this. Deputy Joe. You come please, into this please. house time after time, Deputy one Joe, Wednesday please. after the next, with the same mock indignation, the same piety, the same self-righteousness we have to listen to every Wednesday. And he did it before we had a recession. It was the same hysteria, the same amateur dramatics. And we've had to listen to it again tonight. Well, I don't take lectures from you, Deputy Kyo. I think you're a disgrace to your party, and you should just withdraw some of these accusations that you're making. Please. But you may have them. You may have them, Deputy Please. Deputies. Please. Please. Chairman, the first thing to emphasise is that the HPV vaccine, while a valuable initiative, is just one part of helping to prevent deaths from cervical cancer. Well, the second point to note is that HPV vaccination is not and cannot be a replacement for routine cervical cancer screening. We know that countries that have organised cervical cancer screening programmes have substantially reduced both the number of new cases and deaths from cervical cancer. The government's investment of €35 million Euro in this programme demonstrates our commitment to a national screening programme. And far from the opposition having a monopoly on empathy, for children and young women, as they would purport to do in some of their contributions. Uh, that is not the case. We are facing very difficult times. We are facing tough econo economic times next year. And talk about having the, the, the courage to make these decisions. You'll find that next year it will be tough again. And we'll have to see how things are going to be, uh, be then. But, you know, two things we learned from contributions like that is, one, that you're not fit for government. And two, that the people were right, anticipating the economic downturn they were, that we were going to have in voting for Fianna Fáil and the PDs and Mary Harney as the Minister for Health at the last election. And Mary Harney's record will always be, uh, will always be a great record. The debate on health about four years ago, Chairman, was all about consultants' contracts, was all about primary care teams, was all about uh, waiting lists for treatments. And we have made huge progress on all of these issues. And the one major indicator of improvements in our health service is that the average lifespan in this country is <coughs> over 80 years of age and way ahead of the European average. And we've made huge progress on that over the years. And that is down to a large part of the reforming uh, zeal of Minister Harney. And only today we saw in the paper, I read in the newspaper, that uh, treatments uh, for daycare patients is up by 40%. We're getting people through our hospitals much quicker. We are making beds available in that way through reform. And that is recorded today. Is there a word about this in this, in this House today? Or do we have to listen to this hysteria about us not caring about the no deaths of young children? A bit of balance would be appreciated, and I'm sure that people who are looking in on this House would, would acknowledge that if you were a little bit more generous, they would believe the other stuff that you come out with. But when it's all this nonsense on one side, then it's uh, impossible not to ignore uh, what you have to say. It's important to bear in mind as well that at least 30 per cent of cervical cancers are caused by HPV types not covered by the vaccine, as many of the contributors have pointed out. One minute. In the context of the cancer programme on which the government has embarked, there are a number of priorities from a clinical point of view. Clearly, the first priority is to ensure that we organise our cancer services to deliver better outcomes for patients. This includes supporting the national rollout of the cervical screening programme. We remain persuaded as to the important role that HPV vaccination can play in preventing cervical cancer. The evidence on this is clear. Unfortunately, however, the finances require that we, uh, require that we make these difficult choices. And I want to assure the House that we are fully committed to the introduction of a vaccination programme in future, in future funding decisions as we proceed to implement the National Cancer Programme. Thank you. Thanks, Minister. Uh, Deputy Alan Shatter and the Deputy is five minutes. The Minister, having announced the immunisation programme last August, tempted last night to diminish its importance 
stating that every young woman who does not get the vaccine would be offered a screening programme. The Minister for Children just played exactly the same game. However, screening is the second best alternative. As both ministers should know, and as the Taoiseach should know, prevention is better than cure. The Taoiseach in the Doyle this morning callously and hysterically dismissed Deputy Kenny's call for the immunisation programme yes, to be reinstated to protect the lives of women, and also made reference to the screening programme. In non-clinical terms, it seems that the government regards it as acceptable that women develop precancerous and cancerous cells and that they be denied a life-saving vaccine. We now know that had the vaccine been available a number of years ago, out of 93 deaths from cervical cancer in 2004, 52 would not have occurred. Minister Harney herself acknowledged the two particular forms of the HPV virus cause 70% of cervical cancers and the vaccine prevents these two particular strains. The essential ethos of a national cancer strategy should be not merely detection and treatment, but also prevention where possible. At a time of financial stringency, it seems that this government is now prepared to sacrifice the lives of women on the altar of political expediency. The Minister has made much of her need to identify 700 million euros in cuts for next year. She has annually costed the immunisation programme at 10 million euros. An extra six cents on a packet of 20 cigarettes as part of a cancer strategy would provide the funds required by the Minister for this programme annually. The Minister is right when she said it is about making choices. She made the right choice in August when announcing the start-up of the vaccination programme. Announcing her U-turn in October and cancelling it was the wrong choice. The truth is that this government has no moral compass. It has no commitment to a recognisable value system. I don't believe in demonising the Minister. I just believe that she and her colleagues have been in government for so long that they are incapable of making the right choices and are out of touch and institutionalised. Detached decisions are made which impact on the lives of real people with whose plight this government cannot identify. It is, it is sir, a morally bankrupt government that agrees to deny to young girls a vaccine that it itself acknowledges will prevent cervical cancer. It's incomprehensible we have a minister who can both describe herself as a strong proponent of a life-saving vaccine and then announce and defend the cancellation by her of the programme to administer it. This is essentially about an immunisation programme for children. Has any thought been given to the rights of these children? There is an extraordinary hypocrisy in a government engaging in cross-party discussions for children's rights amendment to the Constitution while simultaneously denying to children life-saving immunisation. This is a government engaged in serial and tragic incompetence on an epic scale. That incompetence was clearly illustrated in the embarrassing contribution tonight of the Minister for Children who attempted to defend the indefensible. It is clear that the Minister for Children utterly failed in his child protection duties to play any meaningful role in Cabinet when this scandalous and indefensible decision was made. If he did attempt to play a role, it was obviously a role that had no impact of any description. Fine Gael's motion not is not a children's issue. issue. It's an extraordinary oh, statement. Oh, Fine, that shows how out of I touch you are, Minister. Fine Gael's motion is a pro-life measure. Voting on this motion is not about party politics, but moral values. It requires all of us as politicians to make moral choices which go beyond party political allegiance or obligations to obey the party whip. The challenge for government de deputies is to act as legislators and support Fine Gael's motion, or to abdicate their constitutional responsibilities and simply behave as lobby fodder. In making their decision, they should reflect on the reality that there are few members in this House who have the not experienced the tragedy and trauma of the death of a close relation or friend as a consequence of cancer. They should act, ask themselves, do they want to vote to contempt others to such a death? It is time, sir, for deputies opposite for once to display both courage and responsibility. Thanks, Deputy. Deputy.